the world car. It's a term you hear today, but it's one that was somewhat unheard of in the 1970s. Ford of North America, Ford of Europe, Ford of Asia, Ford of South America, and really the whole Southern Hemisphere made very different cars for those markets. This meant that Ford was spending product development in each market, and Ford management saw this as wasteful. Why not make one vehicle for the entire world? The first attempt at a world car was the 1981 Escort. Ford of Europe had sold an Escort way back in the 60s. It was a rear-wheel drive platform, somewhat smaller car, but that platform was getting stale. Ford of North America needed a miles per gallon leader because of the new CAFE standards. They needed to raise the average miles per gallon for the entire fleet of Ford products. Ford had tried marketing some European Fords to North America, the Mercury Capri, the Ford Fiesta, but these were single products that were developed with the idea of having dual usage. They weren't really world cars. During model development, the European teams and the North American teams, they couldn't agree on much. So the North American Escort and the Escort Mark III that ended up being in Europe, although they're about the same size, they share very few components. The North American Escort is longer and wider than its European counterpart. In Europe, they developed three different body styles that never came to North America. These include a three-door station wagon, a two-door convertible, and a two-door van. This didn't stop Ford of North America as marketing this car as a world car, and in the 80s, it was the best-selling car in America for three of the nine years of its production. So in today's video, let's take a look at the North American Escort. Camille White, University of Michigan, Heinrich Jekyll, Technical University of Graz, Jay Sakioka, Ford engineers around the world created a world car, Ford Escort. With better gas mileage ratings than Volkswagen Rabbit, Honda Accord, Toyota Corolla hatchback. With front wheel drive traction and four wheel independent suspension. And now, Ford Escort is outselling every imported car line in America. Ford Escort, built to take on the world and do it. The Ford Escort was launched on October 3rd, 1980 for the 1981 model year. It was available as a three-door hatchback or a five-door station wagon. The Escort was powered by a carbureted 1.6-liter inline four-cylinder engine sporting a two-barrel carburetor. It produced 69 horsepower. Escorts featured front-wheel drive, independent four-wheel suspension, rack and pinion steering, and a choice of a three-speed automatic or a four-speed manual transmission. The brakes were front disc and rear drum configuration. 13-inch all-season steel belted radials were the standard tires. The Escort was offered in L, GL, GLX, and SS trim levels. The Escort wagon was offered in an imitation wood grain Squire package in the GL and GLX trims. The SS trim was the sporty option. The SS offered a slightly stiffer suspension through the use of heavy-duty shock absorbers, stiffer springs, a larger front stabilizer bar, upgraded brakes, and larger tires. There was no increase in horsepower output for the SS. To showcase its world car status, Ford designed an Escort badge for the front fenders, which included a globe representing the Earth. The Escort did not receive a warm welcome from the automotive press. 0 to 60 times fell in the mid-15 second range, and the car's handling was described as vague at best. The buying public apparently didn't read these articles or bought into the massive marketing campaign launch for the Escort, as Ford delivered 320,777 Escorts for the 1981 model year. Oh, have you driven new Escort GT? GT of the family. Now we call your kind attention to the TR-type suspension. Excitement hasn't been neglected, cause this unit's fuel injected. Five speed. Never loud, never rude. Got a win in attitude. Have you driven new Escort GT? Have you driven a Ford lately? 1982 saw Ford add a five-door hatchback to the Escort model line. The Escort SS was dropped and replaced with the Escort GT. In March of 1982, a high-output version of the 1.6-liter was added to the Escort GT. It produced 80 horsepower due to a higher compression ratio, a new exhaust system, and larger venturis in the carburetor. The remaining trim line stayed consistent with the year prior. 
Ford revised the Escort badges and adopted the Ford Blue Oval emblem. The 1982 Escort became the best-selling Ford model line and the best-selling automobile nameplate in the United States. Ford delivers 385,132 Escorts for the 1982 model year. For 1983, the exterior was largely a carryover year. The base model was eliminated with the L model taking its place as the entry-level Escort. The GT package, however, saw numerous additions, the largest being the addition of multi-port electronic fuel injection to the 1.6-liter engine. It now boasted 88 horsepower. Additional adds to the GT were as follows, a 5-speed manual transmission, the TRX handling package, front and rear spoilers, alloy wheels, and fog lamps. 0 to 60 times dropped to 14 seconds flat, and while far from quick, it was a second and a half better than the standard Escort. Motor Week ran the quarter mile in 19.5 seconds at a speed of 72 miles an hour. Despite these changes, Escort sales dipped to 315,370 for the 1983 model year. For 1984, the trim levels were revised further as the GLX was dropped and replaced with the LX model. Offered for the five-door hatchback or wagon, the LX was fitted with the fuel-injected engine of the GT along with its blackout trim and cast aluminum wheels. The interior of the Escort was revised, introducing a new dashboard and a new rubber shift boot for manual transmissions. Automatic models received a new gear selector lever with straight lines for gear selection. In line with other Fords, activation of the horn was moved from the turn signal stock and placed on the steering wheel. The radios were also updated. The Escort GT returned, but for those that wanted just a bit more performance, there was the Escort Turbo GT model, featuring a 120 horsepower turbocharged version of the 1.6 liter EFI engine. This drops 0 to 60 times down to a respectable 9.1 seconds. For those looking for additional fuel economy, Ford offered a 2 liter diesel engine, which was produced by Mazda. Ford boasted EPA ratings of 46 city and 68 highway when the diesel engine was selected. Ford delivered 372,523 Escorts for the 1984 model year. You're about to learn why Ford Escort, the world's best-selling car, is out to become even more popular. If all of this seems like a lot to remember about Ford Escort, let us sum it up for you. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? 1985 started out as a carryover year for the Escort with no changes of note to the model line whatsoever. However, in mid-year, Ford released a comprehensive revision of the Escort. Some of the body shell was carried over, however, the front fascia saw extensive aerodynamic revisions with designers fitting a smaller grille and flush-mounted aerodynamic composite headlamps. The 1.6 liter engine was replaced with a more powerful 86 horsepower 1.9 liter. The Turbo GT and GT line was dropped for the rest of the model year. Ford sold 407,083 Escorts in 1985. We designed the Ford Escort GT with an advanced port fuel injected engine. Next, we added a more precise cornering front and rear suspension, along with a carefully selected interior. And we did it all just for fun. This is Escort GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? 1986 is a continuation of the 85 and a half revision. However, the Escort GT returns as the sporty option with a higher output 108 horsepower electronic multi-port fuel injected 1.9 liter four cylinder. The bump in horsepower was achieved by revising the intake manifold and cylinder head and adding an exhaust header. The GT was available only with a manual transmission. It was distinguished by a body color asymmetrical grille, body color bumpers with integrated fog lamps, 15-inch 8-spoke alloy wheels, P195 60HR 15-inch tires, body sill skirts, and a distinctive rear spoiler. Ford further improved the suspension using a new rear stabilizer bar and a heavier front stabilizer bar. Ford sells 430,000 
and 53 escorts in 1986. 1987 sees the escort lineup simplified to just three versions. The Escort Pony became the lowest priced version of the model line. This car offered little to no optional equipment. The upscale version was the GL and the sporty version was the GT. The Pony and GT were offered solely as two-door hatchbacks and the GL was offered as a three-door, five-door or as a wagon. The Pony and GL Escorts adopted throttle body fuel injection, raising the horsepower output of the 1.9 liter to 90. 1987 also saw the retirement of the diesel engine. Sales were strong for the Escort in 1987. It regained the number one selling car in the U.S. market title, with Ford delivering 374,765 Escorts in 1987. 1988 was another carryover year that led to a mid-year revision for the Escort. This revision was more of a facelift. Ford smoothed out the front and rear fascias, the integrated plastic bumpers replaced the metal bumpers on the GL and Pony, while the rear side windows were enlarged and the rear end design was more rounded. Larger 14-inch wheels replaced the 13-inch units on non-GTs, and to accommodate passive restraint regulations, the Escorts received automatic shoulder safety belts. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the automatic shoulder belt system moves the belts into place when the ignition is switched on and the door is closed. But for full protection, you still fasten your lap belt. What if there's an accident? I don't want to be locked in by this. Well, when you open the doors, the belts move forward automatically. Uh... But in the unlikely event they stay locked, there are emergency release levers here. Well. That's a nice idea, not having to reach around for the shoulder harness. Yeah. The Escort's engines received a slightly revised camshaft and roller lifters. Power output of the standard model was unchanged, but the GT went up slightly to 110 horsepower. Escorts held on to the best-selling car in America title in 1988, with sales coming in at 422,035 cars. The multiple port fuel injected Ford Escort GT. Because what's rock without roll? Get 4.9% financing or $500 cash bonus on 89 Escort. The Escorts remained largely unchanged for 1989 and 1990. Ford was gearing up for the April 1990 introduction of the next generation of Escort. Sales remained strong with Ford selling 342,807 Escorts in 1989 and 290,516 in 1990. Just a few final closing points of interest on the North American Escort. The 1.6 liter in its early development, the first couple of years of the Escort, there were issues with the 1.6 liter engine. They had head gasket problems. Now the fix to that was to put stretchable head gasket bolts in and a new head gasket design. That seemed to alleviate those issues. We covered the Turbo GT in this video and also the Mazda diesel engine. The Turbo GT, it's estimated the first year's production was around 1,000 units and the half part of the second year was even less than that. These are truly rare cars. The Mazda diesel engine was available all the way up to 1987 the proportion of diesel sales peaked at 6% in 1982, but it dropped all the way down to 0.37% of sales in 1986. That's why it was discontinued. The passive restraint systems, the seatbelt that when you shut the door, it went up a track and rolled over your arm. That was an option for automakers who had yet to adopt airbags. Congress laid out a rule that either you had to have airbags or you had to have a passive restraint system. Of course, the passive restraint system was a lot cheaper option. So you saw that on a lot of cars in the late 80s time frame. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. That way other people see it. Also consider subscribing. There's lots of videos similar to this one on the channel. Like this one over here, it's on the Ford EXP. That was Ford's two-seater companion car to the Escort. And being the Escort's companion, I've always felt was its biggest obstacle. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.